Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and more. Today we're actually going to go over <coughs> calculating clamp tonnage and the differences in the presses, okay? So there's four different press tonnages or things you could actually use. Um, so you have toggle clamp, you have hydraulic, you have two platen, which is two, they have like the clamshells on them. So I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to turn this around and show you. So here would you'd have a toggle clamp mechanism so what would do is this here would actually clamp it okay so the the advantages that you have on a toggle clamp this is the most common that everybody uses so you have machine advantage energy efficient faster motions and time tested okay the next one would be hydraulic so this would be toggle this would be hydraulic so you got a ram in the center that actually moves and puts all the force in the very center of the of the platen. So this is the simplest design. The machine has no advantages. Clamp tonnage is in the center of the platen and typically smaller machines, okay? Now this is the next common. This is what everybody's actually going to nowadays is a two platen or a two plate, two platen clamp mechanism. So it's got a wider platen more platen real estate so a lot more area inside of here you have your open ejector box shorter clamp so 20 percent shorter and then it's got a low base so it sets the lower to the floor basically okay ones that we don't use hardly anymore is what they call a c-frame clamp okay so this one has no tie bar runs molds in smaller in injection molding presses open access to the platens and heavier machine weight, okay? And there's one supplier. So a lot of these they don't use anymore. They used to use them a lot for like insert molding, stuff like that. I'll show you a video of, of a guy on here. He's doing corners for like uh, window treatments and stuff like that. So I'll show you the video of each one of those and the motions of how they actually move back and forth. Now the hydraulic one, I had a little bit of an issue. I had a guy that was in, in the video kinda, and I was trying to show you guys it, so I went to a different video. But I hope you guys understand the concept of the four different clamping mechanisms. Next, I'll show you how to calculate your um, clamp tonnage, you know, per square inch, okay? So this is a toggle clamp mechanism. Now we'll cut it away. All right, let me get the next one. Okay, so this is a two plate. And you can see the clam shells right here. These are what actually lock it in place to the tie bars and give you your stretch on your tie bars, okay? So you watch. <laughs> so those clamshells open and close. That's, this is called a two plate injection molding machine. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay, so this is a hydraulic one. Don't mind the guy in the video, but you can see right there's the hydraulic ram. Opens, closes, so it puts all the pressure right here at the very front. So that's the hydraulic ram right there. Opens and closes, okay? So... Oops. Okay, so this is what a C-frame injection molding machine looks like, okay? So you can see... They put this in there, it clamps straight down in a vertical motion and molds whatever they're putting together. So he's doing window trim, then he's pushing down, it injects from the top down into here and molds it, the corner on there. So he's doing like window treatments, okay? So you can see, that's the rubber, it goes in like the windows and stuff like that on your cars, okay? I wanted to show you this one more time because that guy was in the video on the other one. This one here is a hydraulic ram. So this ram moves back and forth and puts all the pressure in the center of the 
platen, okay? So that would be a hydraulic one. All right, I'm gonna show you guys some stuff on the board then. All right, guys, I'm back. So I hope you guys enjoyed those little videos inside this video. Next, what I'm gonna show you is you gotta calculate this stuff before you can actually do your tonnage. So <clears throat> there's three different ways of doing your tonnage. So you got kilonewtons, you have metric tons, and you have US tons. So your kilonewtons is one newton amount needed to accelerate one kilogram of mass at the rate of one meter per second squared, okay? So that would equal one kilonewton is 1,000 newtons. Okay, 1,000 kilonewtons is a lot of newtons, okay? Metric tons, this is the most that everybody uses. Most of your machines that come in from overseas, are mo most of them are metric. Uh, so like your Engel presses, stuff like that are all in metric tons. Um, so a rule of thumb is one-tenth of above kilonewton is 100 metric tons. One kilonewton is 0 0.102 metric tons of force. Example, a lot of newtons, okay? U.S. tons, so you'd have machines that have like uh, your millicron presses, stuff like that would have those. Rule of thumb is 10% more of a metric ton, so it'd be 110 tons, okay? So one kilonewton is 0 0.1124 U.S. tons of force. And then example, 1,000 kilonewtons is, you know, 112.4 us tons okay so those are the tonnage that you'd want to use if you're using something okay so let me pull this down here so i can show you guys this okay so so on this what you got to consider whenever you're thinking of tons you're always thinking of this so the tonnage what are you going to use what's your press that you're going to buy is it going to be in kilonewtons us tons or metric tons then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out the tie bar spacing, the real estate, and that's the distance between the tie bars. Okay, so it depends on your mold, what size your mold is, decides what type of press you're going to buy. Your minimum mold height is the distance the clamp can lock up onto the mold. Maximum mold height is the distance the clamp can lock up on the mold as well. <clears throat> you know, you want that daylight area, so your stroke is how far from minimum mold height can the clamp open okay and then your daylight is the total open distance of the clamp from the face of the fixed platen okay so if you're looking at this like on here your minimum mold height would be this all the way at close as far as it'll close that's your minimum mold height it'd be the distance in between here you know your max mold height would be this all the way open as far as it'll open that's your maximum mold height, okay? Then your daylight would be, you take your mold, put your mold in here, and then you take whatever the opening stroke is, the center of this is your daylight area for you to eject the part off, okay? So you always gotta take that in consideration. So the next thing I'll show you guys is I'll show you, I'll write up on the board how to calculate your clamp tonnage, okay? So stay tuned. Okay guys, <clears throat> so I'm back, okay? So I'm going to turn this around and show you this, okay? So let's say you have a part that's 9 inches long by 4 inches wide and less than 1 inch deep, okay? So you want this to be deep, okay? So <clears throat> what you would do is you'd measure the 9.4 or 9 times 4 will get you 36 squared inches, okay? Most presses or most materials are anywhere from two to eight tons per square inch. We do polypropylene here a lot, so it's about around two to three. Most people always do a five is the rule of standard. So what you do is you take that 36 squared inches, you do 36 times five squared inches would be 180 tons. Then you have to add a safety factor of 10% into that. So what it would be is it would be 180, 180 tons to 18 tons equals 198 tons. Okay, so this is when it gets a little tricky. So let's say you have a part that's two inches deep. Instead of one inch deep, it's two inches deep. Okay, so let's say this is two inches. Okay, two inches deep. Now you're going to add another additional 10%. 
of that would be 19.8 more tons to it. So your total would be 217.8 tons. So this would work if you had a 225 ton press. Again, this is how you'd calculate projected area is what you're looking for for your part. So you're taking your part, you're measuring your part. You got a part that's nine, nine inches long by four inches wide by one inch deep, okay? Don't even worry about the one inch. Just go ahead and do this, get it squared. Then take whatever your tonnage is gonna be. We calculated five on here because that's rule of thumb. Most companies do five uh, tons per square inch. Safety factor, remember you always gotta have a safety factor in there. And then <clears throat> this is what it would be. So this is how you calculate clamp tonnage. So the projected area of your part and that, okay? So that's one way to do it. I was gonna tell you guys, I was gonna write down on here. I had, let me set this down, I'm sorry. I'm shaking you guys around a little bit. But I wanted to let you guys know that, you know, there are <clears throat> all different types of injection molding machines. I forgot to tell you guys about the, the hybrid one. There's a hybrid one, it's actually, um, it's a half injection and then, ha or half hydraulic and half servo motor, okay? So it uses the electric. The electric presses didn't come out until 1993, and Nisi actually came out with the the first electric presses. Okay, so now you got Robo Shock, you got all these different ones coming out with all these different um, machines that are all, <coughs> you know, electric. But most of your electric presses are like a thousand ton and less. I don't think there's any that are higher than that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, like I said, your primary ones are hydraulic you know the mechanical electric and then the hybrid okay so like i said you got the the toggle clamp the two plate the hydraulic ram and then the c-frame the c-frame a lot of people don't use anymore um they got away from all those quite a bit so i hope you guys learned something in this video i hope i was able to illustrate a little bit better and get closer to the board so you could actually see what i was writing down up there um please like share and subscribe I really do appreciate the support to the channel. Peace.